Hey everyone, I didn't think I was going to end up making a video about these, but my last video ended up performing very well, and in the comment section I noticed there was a lot of people asking me to continue on and make Pokemon Crystal. So I did just that, but to add a little peppa on top, I decided I was going to make something else to go along with this. So let's skip ahead to the video, and at the very end I'll be doing a Q&A of the questions that I saw the most in the comment section. So let's get right to it. Now just like usual, we're going to start off with the box art, which I got made by the company Go Box It over on Etsy. They actually made all the boxes for me at once and I've just been kind of making these videos whenever I get the chance. But getting back on topic, you guys can see that I kept the design of the box the same as the silver and gold ones I made previously, with the only difference being Entei added to the box. Which I kind of got some hate on because everybody wanted Suicune <laughs> on this one, but my OCD just would not let me put it on the box, just for the fact that it would be on there twice. Suicune on the cover and Suicune on the top. <laughs> So I guess I'm just trying to give myself mainly more to look at when I see these. But anyways, let's move on to what else I did. I decided to do the Japanese green version as well, for no particular reason really. I know some of you are probably wondering why not yellow instead? Well, in the first video I made about these, I actually did a small test run on the other games just to see if they work, and unfortunately, yellow always crashes for me at the same spot every single time. I think it has something to do with the capturing Pikachu animation in the beginning, and that's why I decided to go with green instead. Now, to be honest, I didn't have to go with the Japanese version, I guess. I could have applied a patch over the game to change the language, but I just wanted to keep it as is since this would be just sitting on the shelf. So the next thing that you'll need for this is the Retro Blaster Programmer and the N64 Blaster, which you can pick up over on Retro Stage. I'll leave a link for everything used in this video in the description below, and if you're looking for more of a tutorial on how to use the Retro Blaster, in my previous video on Red and Blue, I did a tutorial at the end showing you how to set all of it up, so I'll leave a link for that as well. Next up, we'll go with the cartridges. For Crystal, I went with a normal blue cart that I bought from Retro Stage, but for Green, I ended up finding a random one on eBay. And let me tell you, Green was a lot quicker to make, because all I had to do was toss the label on, and boom, Green was basically done. Now, I also had a lot of input on my Discord on how to set up the Crystal cartridge, and almost everyone said that if I make it, I need to make it have some type of sparkly resemblance to the original cartridge. The problem with that, though, is that I don't know how to make the carts myself, and I'm pretty sure the sparkle that's on the Game Boy cartridges are from whatever is being mixed in with the resin, or whatever they use to mold the cartridges. So with my very limited knowledge of glitter, I decided I would take the cartridges apart and give this my best shot. I ended up spraying them lightly with some glossy clear coat just to make it a little sticky so I could lay down some silver glitter and not lose or fog up the color of the cartridge. So after I was done with that, I applied the glitter and I let it sit for a little while. Off camera though, I put a small layer of hodgepodge over the glitter to seal it in there because I did not want any glitter falling loose in my N64. So now all I had to do was apply the label and this is how it turned out. I think this came out pretty well, but it is glitter on the inside, so honestly the shine depends upon the light angle, and because of that, I thought it would look kinda dumb if I put the glitter on the outside of the cartridge instead. So yeah, I think this ended up pretty decent. Now let's throw this on the N64 and test it out. Now just like the other ones, I have no issues running it, but I haven't done a 100% playthrough of every cartridge, so I'm not sure if there's any bugs that need fixing anywhere. Also, you don't have to just play Pokemon. I don't really have a compatibility sheet, but most of the Game Boy ROMs I put on here worked pretty well, and they even worked on the N64 EverDrive so you can store more than one game at a time. Alright, let's mash through this intro so we can check out some gameplay. Yeah, so you can see this is running pretty well, and it's a plus to see this on the big screen, but I suppose you could just use the N64 adapter instead, but where's the fun in that? But speaking of fun, let's test the green version real fast. And it starts up no problem. Now, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll start wrapping things up here. If you all enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me cover next, and feel free to join the Discord. Now let's get over to the Q&A. First up, do I sell these? No, I don't. These are only for personal use, but you could make them yourself. How do you get your ROMs? So I back up all my own cartridges using a combination of the Retro Blaster Programmer and the INL Retro Program Dumper, which I have a tutorial on if you're interested. Where do you get all the things used in this video? So everything that I use is in the description below, ranging from the cartridges all the way to the box art. Does the real-time clock work? Kinda. So in Crystal, for example, I'm asked at the title screen to set the clock, and then again to set the clock after in the opening intro of the game. After that, things get a little wonky. I notice that if I try to save the game when it completes, it shoots you forward in time anywhere from a few hours to a few days. And that's why I say kind of. 
The day and night cycles seem to work still, and I suppose to bypass this, you could always use the save state function instead of the in-game saving. So, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Can you fix yellow? No, I don't know how to do any form of coding, so everything was possible because of James Lambert, he's the one who made the N64 conversion site and his own emulator. So any bugs or anything that needs to be addressed should go to him. Can you do Game Boy Advance games? No, so the N64, to my knowledge, can't go higher than Game Boy Color, so that's about where its limits go. And lastly, can you trade with these? No, there's no way to trade, unfortunately. I don't know how to put that in, but to some, that may defeat the purpose of playing these all together because you can't catch them all. But you could also apply a ROM hack over it that allows you to catch all Pokemon. So that's the only way that I can think of to bypass the need for that. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you all enjoyed checking out my collection, and I'll see you all in the next video. Adios.